what other group did we post? Uh, DDM. Oh, directly on his Facebook. Oh, directly on his Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> his Facebook, is it? Anyone on his Facebook? I got invitation. You got invitation. So, what are the other Facebook groups that you got that or just on your Facebook timeline, is it? Like, which group? Um, which other groups? Silence. Okay, no, no, but I mentioned a few groups, but those hands did not did not match up with uh, with uh, all the hands that like find it on Facebook event. Those are missing day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you handle missing data using uh, pandas? Pandas got quite a good way yeah. to handle. Missing data. Yeah. So, oh, that's a mystery, is it? Okay. So, um, I, uh, it's been suggested that um, I promote uh, events. So, um, how I promote my events by wearing a T-shirt. Okay. So, anyone can tell what this is. Of course. Uh, <laughs> this is a T-shirt of the PyCon Hong Kong for last year. So we are going to host uh, PyCon Hong Kong again, um, probably in uh, CDU. We are still trying to get the right room. PyCon uh, Hong Kong for last year. And uh, we are hoping to organize it in the first. So we are uh, the first uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday um, of. Uh, November. Yes, so, uh, so we, uh, uh, we uh, want to confirm a lot of room. We will uh, notify everyone. Wow, I just keep getting more people. So, um, actually, uh, I haven't asked him, but I would like to know what topic or what thing do you want to ask him? Everyone silent. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> so quick. It depends on how much I understand. <laughs> uh, Chainsaw is a good, uh, good speaker, and a lot of time I went to his talk, and he take care of a lot of the uh, more. Um, uh, may I say, junior people? Right. Because like, oh, he, he always explains a lot of terms, though some of them I already know, but so I think uh, you should be able to understand quite a bit of this talk. Okay, so, Sammy, are there any other things that you want to talk about? No. No, no, you, you should uh, introduce Open Source Hong Kong that helped to organize this event. Just a simple word. So, uh, Open Source Hong Kong is also co-organizer co co of this event with uh, Hong Kong Art Logistical Com, and, and we 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 have a monthly uh, open source uh, meetup uh, usually in City University, and, and our website is uh, open source Project, and also you can find our. Uh, Facebook go face Facebook page and also meet up go on Facebook and meet up. So you just search open source Hong Kong, and and we also co-organized a uh, uh, Hong Kong open source conference and PyCon Hong Kong with uh, with, with with other groups. Yeah, so you can uh, uh, you can uh, follow our Facebook page and also Twitter as well for for. Uh, for upcoming events and also announcement. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, so there's a few minutes we have changed song. Okay, so just be a little bit patient. <coughs>
there will be an intermission uh, in, in this talk because it's almost impossible for all of you to stay here for two hours. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, you will have, we, we will have a 10 minutes break. Uh, and then uh, if you find it boring, you can go <laughs> during the break. And uh, yeah, the law of two feet. And um, so uh, let's get started, okay? And uh, so I, I, I begin my talk with a very simple question. How many of you know who I am? <laughs> so no. if you, uh, okay, I, I don't know any uh, German. Just pretend I don't know any German, okay? And uh, so if you don't know who I am, please clap your hand. Yeah, these people are honest. Yeah, because even I do not know who I am. And, uh, okay, uh, this is a lie. Anyway, uh, I'm, uh, okay, people call me Chainsaw. But uh, my real name actually is Chong Hong Chen, a very boring Chinese name. And uh, I'm a PhD student at the, uh, at the Journalism and Media Studies Center in the you know, uh, University of Hong Kong. But my previous training is not on journalism. And uh, my previous training is on statistics. And my undergraduate is biology. And I joke about that, uh, okay, when I'm in my undergraduate, okay, I fail my statistic test. So, uh, but now I'm, 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 I'm here to give you a talk about uh, data journalism, and uh, which is mostly about uh, statistics. And uh, also, I teach in the university uh, of a course called Statistics for Journalists. You see how dangerous our economy is. <laughs> but anyway, and, um, <laughs> and um, people, people always consider me a little bit smart. But the, 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 the reason for, for this image is because I can teach programming to the statisticians, and then I can teach statistics to the social scientists, and then I can teach social scientists to programmers. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm always on a very privileged uh, position to teach something that the people don't know. And um, so I, I would like to do another survey, okay. Uh, how many of you consider yourself a uh, journalist? If you're a journalist, please clap your hand. Okay, so, so cool. There are we're actually some journalists here. And um, today, for, the, for those journalists, I will only teach you the uh, uh, data visualization and, and things like that, okay? You can ignore all the, all the parts about uh, journalism, okay? <laughs> and uh, how many of you have considered yourself a data scientist, programmer, software developer, and, and things like that? Now please clap your hand. Okay, sad news for the journalists. You have been outnumbered. Okay. <laughs> And uh, for, uh, for, for, for the programmers, you can uh, cover your ear when you see some, uh, when I talk about something about data visualization, how to uh, deal with data, you can just learn about how to do some proper journalism. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I mentioned about journalism. Okay. So I, I, I want to ask a very fundamental questions about journalism, which is, what is news? Those journalists should be able to answer this question, right? 
what is news. <coughs> no one, okay, anyway. <laughs> this is something I expected actually, because it's very difficult to define what is news. But uh, when I'm a student in my department, okay, uh, the, there is one professor give a very concise definition of what is news, okay, which is news is about change, okay. If there is something change. It can be a news, okay, but whether or not this change is interesting, which is depend on your interpretation. And also, uh, apart from changes, there is also another factor about news, which is really important, which is the facts the truths, okay, and um, this is a standard textbook that we use in the JMSC, okay, which is called the element of journalism, okay, and, there, and um, the Neiman uh, laboratory put the full text on nine uh, about this book, the uh, element of journalism. And it defines some very fundamental principle of what is journalism. And um, this is the principle number one of journalism, which is uh, journalism's first obligation is to tell the truth. Okay, But in this uh, difficult time, it's very difficult for the journalist to tell the truth. So, but Anyway, I need to bring it up, okay? The first obligation is to the truth. So, don't lie, okay? Don't do fake news, okay? And uh, apart from the uh, principle number one, the uh, principle number three about journalism is the essence of journalism is the discipline of verification, okay? So, when you see something and you know something, you can report it directly. But what made the difference between an amateur broker and a journalist is verification. Okay, you need to verify the fact that or the information you get on the ground. You need to verify. It. Okay, and. Um, it actually, the, 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 the book actually tell you something about how to do, what is the journalistic definition of uh, verification. And um, I find it very interesting, particularly the point three is to be transparent about your method and motive. And, um, but again, in this difficult time, we are very difficult to be transparent. For example, you will also always uh, read on the news, there are a lot of articles which have the information source that they seems like you see, or whatever. And those information source, you will never know who they are. And, um, but anyway, this is the essence of journalism, which is something that I find it really interesting and really important, so that I need to tell you about it before I move on to data journalism. Okay, and um, so facts. What is facts? Okay. Huh? Yeah, and um, yeah, interpretation of the reality, and um, so. But now we have the artifact of the fact, which is the data. Okay, 
And um, for example, this is the uh, is the website of David Webb. Okay, David Webb is a very famous. Uh, what, what, what should be the proper title for him? Uh, independent financial analyst. Okay. Um, his website actually is quite interesting, and uh, he, he 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 have uh, he have the instinct of putting all the data about the financial market in Hong Kong. For example, we have a, we have a database called a uh, website who's who, and um, he put in all the uh, board member of all the uh, all the listed company in Hong Kong. So, uh, for example, let's say MTR Corporation, and you can click on it, and this will list list out all the uh, board member of uh, MTR. Okay. These are the data. Okay, we have a lot of data actually. Uh, in the past, we have a problem because uh, we don't have this data. Uh, the data is in a uh, circuit chain. So if you have one data point, you can report about it. Okay. You may say the depth of one is a tragedy, but the depth of million is a statistics. But uh, in the past, we, because we don't have a lot of data, so we can report something based on very little data. But now, we have a lot of data. The data is in abundance. Okay, One prime example of the uh, abundance of data is the uh, Panama paper, which is one or two years ago. And, uh, we have a lot of data about the Panama paper, but we cannot analyze all of them because there's really a lot, and uh, the data is also not structural. Such it's not in a in a, in a analyzable structure. So right now, the journalists, if they want to study the Panama paper, they can only study some of them, make it a case study. But actually, if you can develop a system that can interpret all those Panama papers, actually you can make a very good story about the Panama paper. And uh, so, now, we have massive amount of data, right? But the data sitting in form like this is boring. And uh, actually we cannot gain a lot of insights from this data set, just by looking at the data. So, what I do is want to study the trend in this data set. Okay. Why I want to study trend or things like that? Because news is about change, right? So. If you can identify some trend, meaning you can, you may be able to dig out the changes in the data set. So, this is my first, actually, this is my first uh, article about uh, of data journalism. And uh, actually, I, I, I did some before, but uh, this is the first one that it called the data journalism, which is uh, a little bit more than two years ago. And I try to study the relationship between the board member uh, of all the listed company and uh, how uh, the board members share their board membership between two companies. And then I put it as a graph, which is a level graph. And I can also uh, I can also find out who are the most important people in Hong Kong in the listed company, and 
it turned out to be a uh, step by him. But <laughs> okay, this is the this is my first piece, and um, but um, when I do it, the, we do the first piece. Actually, I, I don't know what I should do because I'm not a journalist, so I. What I do is in Chinese we call it multi-sector overhaul. Okay, I don't know what I do, so I just analyze the data, like uh, like make it a social science problem, and then uh, analyze it, and then try to extract something that of interest. Okay, and uh, by that time the reception actually is polarized. Okay, I have a lot of shares of this story, and also there is some people trying to say that this is not a good story. Okay, for example, it's on Ming Pao, but you know Ming Pao is a boring flagship paper, so I can only publish it as a as an ordinary news piece. So there will be there is no impact. So this. He, this person is trying to say uh, it's only a graph and also the words. They, he he wants something interactive. Okay, he wants more. And uh, and also there are some people who say that okay, this article is <laughs> sucks. Okay. And um, and he say that okay, some broker can do it much better than me <coughs> by just looking at those board members without doing any analysis. Okay, so he have a point. And um, so this is my first piece. And by that time, I don't know what I what I'm doing actually, but. Uh, So, uh, but after two years of doing that, I sort of know what is data journalism. Okay, what is the essence of data journalism? How to make a data journalism story interesting? Okay, but before that, I want to give a definition of data journalism first. Okay, and but according to my search. On the internet, there are actually different definitions of data journalism. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, this is the okay. I, I think SCMP is the first to do data journalism in Hong Kong, actually. So, and um, this is one of the story, and uh, it's called in the long one. We visualize the Hong Kong marathon results. And uh, in the X SCMP version of data journalism, they do uh, more like explanatory journalism based on data. Okay, so they they try to visualize some data, but without analyzing it, just put it, and then uh, so that you you know what is going on. For example. Uh, uh, this this story actually is by uh, Cedric Sam. Cedric Sam is my uh, co-worker. Uh, he was my co-worker in JMSE, and then he moved to 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 SCMP and then do this piece. And um, what 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 he's trying to do is to visualize the results of the marathon. And um, so these are the Fathers want us, and uh, and then the, the 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 different color represent the gender actually. So uh, most of the fathers wanna is is male, and then there will be some females, and actually most of the people run in this range, which is. Around four hours, and then we can have people to run it for six hours. And okay, 
they try to do the data visualization to to explain something, to arouse your human interest. But they didn't do a lot of uh, analysis. Okay. And uh, and this piece is considered to be data journalism for another reason because it's written in English. And um, there are also another polar extreme. Do anyone know this news outlet? It's called Dodge Dodge News. Okay. It's one of those internet media, or in his terminology, is Cao Cao Zi. And um, they have a section called data journalism. Okay. But if you look at what they say, what is the meaning of data journalism in dot dot news, which is, okay, they report the survey from the third party and then they call it data journalism. Okay, it's meaning news article with numbers. Okay, so they call it data journalism this way. And uh, as you can see, the, data, the definition of data journalism is very wide. So I, I would like to give a very precise definition of data journalism. And of course, it's not done by me, it's done by somebody else. So, uh, do anyone know what is 538? Okay. 538 is a data journalism portal by Nate Silver. Okay. And um, they do some amazing data journalism <laughs> stories. But now they are known for being their wrong prediction about the, the presidential election. But there is something new. But anyway, I but they, they do very good data journalism stories. And uh, two years ago, they gave a talk in the user conference and uh, talk about how the 538 use R for data journalism stories. And um, the speaker, Andrew Fowers, give a very precise definition of data journalism, which is empirical social science on a deadline. Okay, so basically the difference between the definition of the XCMP and also the uh, dot dot news definition is empirical social science. Okay, so if you want to do empirical social science meaning that you need to analyze the data to gain some insights about the data, rather than just visualize the data. Okay. And, um, but they also give a very interesting point about how they do data journalism. You can actually use some very sophisticated method to do the data analysis, but they choose to use a rigorous method, but interpretable methods. Okay, it's meaning that okay, they can use deep learning, right, to to to, to analyze the data. But if you use deep learning, it to be very difficult to explain it to the readers. So. Well, they're using deep learning, they use some simple interpretable methods like linear regression. At the most, they will use uh, uh, recursive partitioning, which is uh, plotting the uh, decision trees. And, um, okay, apart from that, apart from doing the so called empirical social science, still, you need to have the new sense to find the story from the data. Okay. So, uh, what time is it? Okay. And um, actually, my talk will be uh, divided into 
seven parts. <laughs> okay. This is the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and now I, 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 I'm starting the, 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 the meat of my, of my talk, and uh, which is seven lessons I learned from my two years as a, as a data journalist, as a dental data journalist. Okay. So, the first, the first lesson is grammar of graphics. Okay. So, what is your logic set? I have already write down, so the first one is the grammar of graphics. <laughs> so what is grammar of graphics? Do you ever know what is grammar of graphics? <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> so I began with these three charts. What is grammar by by explaining what is grammar of graphics? Okay. Do anyone know the name of this chart? Scatter plot. Okay, many of you know what is the scatter plot. What is the name of this chart? Line chart. Line chart. Okay. How about this one? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. <laughs> it's a combination of scatter plot and a line chart. The reason why we have problem uh, finding a name for this chart is because it's ambiguous. And if you invent a name for this chart, let's call it uh, let's call it a Carrie Lane chart. Okay. <laughs> and then we try to explain to other people what is Carrie Lane chart, and then people will get confused. Okay. <laughs> so, grammar of graphics, back to our, our, our topics. Because we have problem describing these graphs. So, uh, a scholar called uh, Leland Wilkinson, okay, he created uh, something called a grammar of graphics, and it addressed one fundamental question. Okay, that fundamental question is: Do you know what it is? I don't know, so I need to find out in my notes. <laughs> okay, the fundamental question is: How to concisely describe a graph? Okay, so. If we have a grammar of graphics, we can, without knowing the names of this chart, we can have a grammar to describe this graph. Okay. But uh, when Wilkinson created a grammar of graphics, which is very difficult to use, his system is very difficult to use. So uh, after 10 years, there is another genius, which is called a Hadley Wickham. If you if you use R before, you should know him. And um, he improved the model of uh, grammar of graphics, and uh, he called layer graphic of gra layer grammar of graphics. Okay, it's still difficult to understand, but uh, he earned. A PhD by proposing the layer grammar of graphics. So, but what is the layer grammar of graphics that is important? So, any graph in the world can be explained in terms of this seven grammatical units which is the data, the static mapping, geometry, facet, facet, statistics, coordinate, and theme. But 
the most important grammatical element is actually this three, because this three is the essential uh, element of a graph. But still, I just feeding you a lot of terms and knowledge, but we don't know how it works. So, any graphs, either this one, this one, or this one, start with the data, which is intuitive. If you don't have data, how can you call a graph? This is a simple enough uh, explanation of what is data. Okay, this is the first layer, which is data. The second layer, mapping, is static mapping, which is talking about how the data map, for example, in this case, how the data map on this two axes. Okay. And finally, is geometry. Geometry is how the data is represented on this graph. For example, in this case, the geometry is a point. In this case, the geometry is a line. So, in this case, the geometry is point and line. So, we can, we, we still, we don't know the name of this chart, but we can use that grammar to describe what this graph is, okay? So, I would like to apply it using this data, okay? So, anyone can give a guess on what this data is? U.S. presidential award? Yeah, it's the data of the U.S. presidential election. Okay, so, Suppose we call this data votes. So, the data will be the votes. That's simple enough, right? And then, the mapping. For example, I want to plot the year and then put the votes on the graph. So, I will map the x-axis being the year and the y-axis being the vote. So if I try to plot it, that will be something like this. This one will be year. That one will be the number of votes. So this is the second layer. But still, we cannot see anything on this graph because we need the first essential grammatical element, which is the geometry. Okay. Suppose we want the geometry to be the point. Point. So, for example, in uh, suppose this one is two thousand sixteen. And then we plot it on the graph, which is will be something like that. That one will be 62.9 and then 65.8, something like that. And then we try to pull out all of them. And then we will have a graph. Okay. You may want to do, add one more geometry on this graph. For example, if we add the lines, then we will join all those points together, or even we can map the color to the party. So we will have different color points, and then they join together in different color. So then you can see the difference. This is the higher order concept of what is square of graphics. Okay, why this is important? Okay, the reason why this is important because 
sometimes you need to invent some new graphs rather than using the graph defined already defined by Excel for example if you try to plot something on Excel Excel will ask you what is the name of the graph you want to plot so you will fall into the question of these because you don't know how the graph the name of the graph so you will not know how to invent a new graph but if you have a flexible system like this which is the gram of graphics you can invent your own graphs so there is something important so I will give a demo and um, This is actually the same data set, right? As that one. So, I will repeat the process that I have demonstrated. So, the data being the uh, US ELAC, I have a data set called US ELAC, for example. And uh, if I run that, it will give me nothing. Why? Because I haven't map tell the computer how how the uh, data maps into the axis or into the points or whatever. So I will add a mapping, which is the AES with the uh, y-axis being the votes and the x-axis being the year. So I will plot it again. Again, you have nothing. Okay, it's only if you are an axis, two pairs of axis. Still nothing because we don't, we haven't tell the computer how the data should be represented on this grid. So, I will add a geometry called a point, geom point. So, This time we have some data. Okay. By looking at this graph, we can already we can already tell a story. Okay. Can anyone tell me this at least uh, a one sentence description about these graphs? What you can find on these graphs? Come on. More people voting. Huh? More people voting. Okay, more people voting is something that you can see the, the school under. How many, another observation from these graphs? Take the strategy so we don't vote. Yeah, can you see it? There, there's the abnormalities. We're really high. Yeah, it's so far. Actually, it's so far. Yeah, in that vote, Obama vote. So, by looking at this graph already, we can tell something about the U.S. presidential election. And also, the, these are very, also very interesting, actually. The margin is very thin between the two candidates. If you recall the, the history, you may, you, 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 you may uh, still remember what has happened. Yeah. But this graph is still not very yeah, informative. Because, for example, we don't know which dots represent uh, GOP, which dot represent Democrat. So, we can uh, modify the uh, aesthetic mapping by adding the color equal to the party, for example. So, now we have two different colors, but sadly, uh, Democrat 
has been represented as red. <laughs> but still, we can we okay. Now we have the we have the colors. So, can we improve our interpretation about the U.S. presidential election by adding the colors? For example, in most of the time, you will see that the red darkness is higher than the green darkness. So, observation number one, with the exception of being this way. Okay. What else? Can you see a trend? No, because it's a dot, so it's very difficult to, to see a trend. So, we can modify it by adding one more geometry on this graph, which is the line. So, I think this one is, will be easier for us to spot a trend in this graph. And uh, for example, you can see that in, during this period, there is a massive growth in the voters. So, what had happened during this period of time? So there's other factors. War in Iraq. War in Iraq. But what is the beginning of war in Iraq? War in Iraq. Okay, there is a search. And uh, you can see that, even see that the, the, the major improve, the, uh, the, the major growth in the vote is actually in Cuba. Other than Canada. And uh, Not. So. That would not have more votes, but which one win the election, win the election? The angry bit. We won the vote in the correct position, the states, counties actually. Yeah. Actually, only these two elections the Democrat uh, uh, win, and then all of them is the GOP. There is some something that you should ask him about what is the problem of the U.S. presidential system. But anyway, by by looking at this visualization, we can already tell a very compelling story about the the election. In the US. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think I have demonstrated what is grammar of graphics. So, to recap, grammar of graphics is to describe a graph okay, concisely using the grammatical element rather than ambu uh, uh, ambiguous terms like scatter plot or like graph. Okay. So, this is my first lesson of uh, working as a data journalism. Working in data journalism, you need to be familiarized with grammar of graphics. And also, next time when you see a graph, a very strange graph, you should be able to try to describe it <laughs> using the grammar of graphics rather than say this is chainsaw graph, for example. <laughs> and, um, okay. The first lesson. So what is time now? Okay, probably I will, I, I will talk about one more lesson and then I will give a break. Okay, is that okay? So the next one is called GG expansion. <laughs> it's the extension of the grammar of graphics. Okay. So, I 
maybe we'll show you this one. This is probably another story which has been shared by a lot of people, which is about the by elections in the neutral treaties. Can anyone give me a summary about that by election? Who won? Alvin Young. Alvin Young. Yeah, because China is uh, quite a traceable change of this political position. Yeah. And then and it triggered a by election. Yeah. And then caused a lot of women to contact yeah. who is the legitimate heir to the seat. <laughs> and also, uh, some, some ideas like uh, if the demo, if the anti establishment didn't stick to Remember, news is about change. So the biggest change in that election is there is one truly localist candidate in that election, okay, which is the DK ever learned. Okay. This is news. Okay, even 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 a new candidate in that election is already a news. So I can spot that this is a very important news. So I prepare for this story for a month. And I will tell you something about how I prepare for that for this story after the break. But before that <laughs> I want to talk about what is GG extension. Okay, so for example, this is a map. Okay, believe it or not, I plot this graph or I plot this map using the Raymond graphics. Okay, but of course I'm not using the uh, not using the base. Uh, ggplot2 to do this plotting. I use some extension of the uh, of the grammar of graphics, and uh, the grammar of graphics by itself has been growth into itself as a uh, uh, ecosystem. So you can use the same seven element of grammar of graphics to describe all kind of graphs. Uh, for example, let's say networks, and um, and also the prod is called this, this prod have a new name. It's called GG join, or you call it join pod. Do you know what is the, the reason of why it's called the join pod? Join, J O Y. Are you happy? <laughs> no, it, it can be, but it's not that. But I could try, but it's not. You can, you can enjoy some ecstasy by trying the mountains. <laughs> so, uh, it's not related to view joy, but it's related to this. Okay. This is a very famous album. By the, by the band Joint Division. So they have a new name for this prod because this prod is in, inspired by that uh, cover. So they call it <laughs> Joint, Joint Pod or GG Joint. And um, I wonder one day they want to hear the song again. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, one of the extensions is called a GG Map. So you can use the same concept of this to plot any maps. So for example, you can represent each data as a point in a graph on the maps. So 
Again, we don't know the name of this map, but we can describe describe the, what is happening on this map using the Grandmont graphics. So, the extension of the Grandmont graphics is just for the reinforcement of why the grammar of graphics is, is important uh, because it's extensible to something else. So uh, I will talk about the rest of the five lessons after the break. So now we will have a uh, 10 minutes break. So relieve yourself. If you have, uh, if, you, if you find it boring, you can go now. I don't mind it at all. So see you in 10 minutes. <laughs>